इट इज यूजली अ डिम डेज एंड अ कॉल टू एडवेंचर दैट मेक्स अ मिस्ट्री एक्साइटिंग द हाउस ऑफ अ थाउजेंड कैंडल्स इज अ क्लासिक मिस्ट्री थ्रिलर दैट हैज ऑल द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ अ गुड इमर्सिव मिस्ट्री द बुक वॉज ओरिजिनली पब्लिश्ड इन नाइनटीन जीरो सिक्स एंड हैज बीन मेड इन टू मूवीज ट्वाइस सिंस दिन द स्टोरी ऑफ द नॉवल गोज लाइक दिस A witty young man named Jack Glen Arm has squandered all of his father's money in his travels and wanderings. It is the month of October when he receives a call through which he is informed that his grandfather had passed away in the month of June. A lawyer named Arthur Pickering calls Jack to read to him the will of his grandfather John Glen Arm, who was a rich man. He tells Jack that his grandfather entrusted him with the will and he was a loyal friend of him. But Jack doesn't seem to trust Pickering who was also one of his school time friends. According to the will, young Glen Arm will receive his inheritance, but there are some tough stipulations attached to it. The main condition is that Jack has to stay in his grandfather's mansion for an year. without traveling away from that area during this time the other condition is that he is forbidden to marry a young woman named marian who lives there if during the term of this year he marries this woman then the entire inheritance will go to a christian girl school named saint agathas in the village his grandpa's house is a secluded mansion located in rural indiana a setting around which the major portion of the novel is set jack who is already short of money decides to move ahead for his stay in this mansion thinking that it would be no big deal so jack proceeds towards the mansion upon reaching there he is welcomed by the housekeeper bates who was a royal servant of the grandfather and who had transmitted the news of his death to pickering Jack's grandfather was an avid lover of all things architecture and design. He had specially gotten foreign artists and laborers to build this mansion, sculpting the intricate details and design work. The moment he stepped inside the mansion, he already came across some of the finest architectural details crafted in the interiors as well as outdoors. towering stone walls luxurious palatial style rooms shimmering colossal crystal chandelier dangling from the high ceiling of the lobby fireplace crackling with hickory wood logs a majestic fireplace mantelpiece and a mammoth library full of bookshelves slinging with tons of books on subjects of architecture and design but the most unusual thing he notices inside the mansion is candles There are about hundreds and hundreds of candles illuminating the mansion from the inside. From tallow candles to expensive silver candlesticks, there are varied candle sconces tucked everywhere, from the walls to the tables. Bates tells him that his grandfather was highly passionate about collecting different types of candles, and so he usually imported them from around the world. Outside the mansion Jack experiences sunset skies dripping with the festal colors of red brown and gold There is a small lake where some people are paddling in their canoes As the moon mirrors itself in the glassy lake Jack tours around the territory walking across lush woodlands countryside courtyards blooming with seasonal flowers with a view of a girls school bordering the other side of the lake Everything is as tranquil as it could be until one night Jack almost gets shot down by a bullet while he is sitting beside an open window reading a book From there on the mansion as serene and beautiful it appeared to him turns into a haunted place brimming with creepy secrets As time goes by he learns of secret treasures buried in the mansion He hears ghost-like figures walking behind the wall. He discovers an underground tunnel that leads to a chapel adjoining the school. How many unrelieved passage passageways are snaking inside this mansion? He wonders. 
This mysterious enigma presented in the novel is further enhanced by a, a romantic subplot that is the cherry on the top. Jack, while taking his daily walks through the countryside, repetitively comes across a school teacher named Marianne who also plays music. He usually spots her wearing a skirt and a red tam o' shanter, which is a type of a woman's hat with a bobble attached to it. Gradually, he falls in love with her, forgetting that he is forbidden to marry her in case he wants to receive his grandfather's inheritance. One day, as Marian leaves the village to go to Cincinnati, Jack finds himself tempted to take a train and follow her, and so he ends up breaking one condition of his grandfather's will. Pickering, who is already seeking to grab the mansion's buried treasures, learns about Jack's disappearance from the mansion. He uses this opportunity to tell Jack that he will now not receive a nugget of his grandfather's inheritance. But soon enough, Jack's friend Larry, who is a guest in the mansion, discovers the door of bewilderment hidden inside the secret underground tunnel of the mansion, enclosed by loose bricks and lightly plastered cement. Behind the door is a bundle of papers containing Grandpa's notes, according to which Pickering had taken a huge debt of three twenty thousand dollars from Jack's grandfather. They come to know that Pickering was plotting against Jack, together with Larry and Stoddard, the village chaplain. Jack drives away Pickering and his team, who are all after the buried treasure. On the flip side, Jack had begun to think that Marian is mixed up with Pickering, and she is the one who had told him about his disappearance from the mansion. Jack turns revengeful against her, despite his initial adoration and love for her. Jack even starts doubting Bates. Everybody seems to be involved in the conspiracy against him. At last, an enormous twist unfolds in the story when, through a secret passageway concealed inside the chimney piece, Jack's grandfather steps in. He had never died. All this time, he had been living isolated in Egypt. He had actually plotted this entire drama for various reasons. Firstly, he wanted to know who was actually faithful to him. Pickering was not, and second, he wanted Jack to pay attention to his architectural expertise by uncovering the clues he had hidden inside various places in the mansion. Only two people knew about the truth about his grandfather. One was Bates, and the other was Marian. The old man also reveals a box of treasure that he had hidden inside an iron safe tucked behind the chimney piece. The novel wraps up with a happy ending, with Jack's love for Marianne rekindled into a marriage, and he becoming the sole owner of his grandfather's inheritance. The novel features elaborate descriptions and classical retro-themed writing style, interesting purpose-driven characters, and a plot characterized by a thrilling mystery and tidbits of romance, adding to the perfume of the storyline. I totally enjoyed reading it, and so will you if you like to read mysteries and adventure thrillers. Thank you.